Born February 28th, 1906, in Williamsburg, New York. Siegel was an offshoot of poverty, but he'd be the driving force behind the creation of Las Vegas, and immortalized by Hollywood actors such as Warren Beatty in movies that would bear his nickname. As a young boy, Siegel preyed on pushcart vendors, a merchant way of making a living. If vendors didn't belly up, Siegel's short-fused temper would spring into action. His ambition for violence would earn him the nickname Bugsy. Teaming up in 1918 with fellow gangster Meyer Lansky, the pair took up to car theft. Not long would they soon be big players in bootlegging and gambling rackets. Bugsy would be described by his partner in crime as very brave, although his shoot-first way and intuition to act without thinking would be his Achilles heel and one of many reasons and factors that would ultimately be the downfall to the architect of Las Vegas. Siegel's manner of extortion, similar to fellow gangster of his time, Louis Lepke. Unlike Lepke, Siegel wasn't common to beat vendors. Rather, he would order his sidekick, Morris Sedway, to douse the carts in kerosene and set them ablaze. It only took one fiery lesson for vendors to pay up. Rubbing elbows with such future prominent underworld figures as Al Capone, Lucky Luciano, and Meyer Lansky, Siegel would be one of four assassins tasked with the execution of Joe the Boss Masseria. In 1937, Siegel set his sights west to the sunny state of California, taking with him his bootlegging and gambling rackets. There, he established dens and offshore gambling ships. While under the watchful eye of L.A. crime boss Jack Dragna, Siegel would consolidate the pre-existing rackets of prostitution, narcotics, and bookmaking. It wouldn't be long, though, before the lavish lifestyle attracted him. The A-list way of living, frequenting Hollywood parties while enjoying the company of moguls and starlets. With the help of Dragna, Bugsy would live the extravagant lifestyle in Beverly Hills. His childhood friend and close confidant actor George Raft, who would later testify in 1944 on Siegel's behalf after he was arrested for bookmaking, in which he was acquitted. It wouldn't be the last escape from the law, though. Siegel would be implemented in the murder of Harry Big Greeny Greenberg, who was assassinated on November 22, 1939. But Siegel wouldn't face trial until September of 1941. Siegel's treatment in prison was that of an A-celebrity, having female visitors, refusing prison food. He was even granted leave for dental visits. With this A-list treatment and the sudden death of two state witnesses, Bugsy would escape the clutches of the law. Not only was Bugsy, or how he would prefer to be called Ben or Mr. Siegel, skilled in gambling management and elite cortaceous charm, but was an early founder of the murder-for-hire organization known as Murder, Inc. Siegel, Lansky, and Luciano became lifelong friends. Although the three were top of their game in the criminal underworld, they also unknowingly to themselves broke down the existing racial barriers that prevented Italian and Jewish gangsters from working together. With the death of Arnold Rothstein, the trio kept the vision alive of a national crime network with the muscle made up of an elite group of hitmen that were only available for hire to mob bosses on commission-sanctioned murders. While working in L.A. as a bagman and setting up syndicate gambling operations and a narcotic smuggling network from Mexico, Lansky sent Siegel to set out possibilities in Nevada. With the completion of the Hoover Dam, water and electricity was plentiful. The vision of expansion was possible. By the early 1940s, though, the dusty backwater town only consisted of two hotels with less than 110 rooms. While on scouting operations, Siegel ran into businessman Billy Wilkerson, initial owner of the Flamingo Hotel, who began development of the building and property. While running low on money is when Siegel and his mob financing finally bought out Wilkerson. With a loan of $2 million from Lansky, Luciano, and Frank Costello, the majority of funding coming from his friend Lansky, Siegel's costs for his luxury hotel, resort, and casino, along with his lavish lifestyle of living, would total more than $6 million, an equivalent of more than $125 million today. Once the Flamingo Hotel, Resort, and Casino was complete, a marvel of its time for only those who constructed it would enjoy. Under heavy pressure from his investors, Siegel desperately was in need. He would use his network in Hollywood to attract patrons, but still losing money, even the likes of George Raft, wouldn't help Siegel. By 1947, the Flamingo would see a small increase in profit, but not what was anticipated by his underworld investors. Believing that Siegel or his mistress, Virginia Hill, who the hotel was named after, had been stealing from the skim, 
a popular way for organized crime to collect millions of dollars a year in unclaimed monies without the IRS or anyone else taking notice. Siegel figured he was in the clear, but unfortunately on the night of June 20, 1947, while reading a copy of the Los Angeles Times, bullets from a 30 caliber military M1 carbine rifle ripped through, the se ripped through Siegel and in the living room. Siegel was struck twice in the head, leaving his left eye in the next room. He would be hit with several more shots. Nine shots in total would be fired, Siegel taking five. After his death, Las Vegas was thrown into a national spotlight, and less than 12 hours after the murder of Siegel, David Berman and mob associates Sedway and Gus Greenbaum walked into the Flamingo Hotel and took over operations, under the suspected orders of Meyer Lansky and Lucky Luciano.